Hello and welcome to ADHD Adventures, where we are shining the spotlight on fabulous ADHDers. I'm Susie Payton and my guest today is the fabulous Michelle Minikin. Thank you, Michelle, and welcome. Thank you for being my first guest on the show. Thank you ever so much for inviting me. This is exciting. Very welcome. Right, let's dive in because this is going to be short, sharp and sweet so that we can reach as many ADHDers as we can. So, Michelle, tell me a bit about you, where you're from and what you do. So I am based up in Newcastle upon Tyne, but by my accent, you probably can't tell that because I was an army child. So everywhere we travelled. Um, my official profession is I'm an organisational psychologist and coach, and I have a business called Work Pirates with my partner, James, and we're on a mission to unf work. And I'm being polite today. Thank you for not saying the F word. <laughs> so what does that mean? You go into organisations and make them better? Is that? Yes, well, we're, we're hoping to do lots of research into why organisations are the way they are and what is a better way of doing things to make sure that employees have willpower, able to exercise their own willpower and um, pursue the things that they feel passionate about rather than having just to do what they're told and behave all day long fabulous yeah well you know where to find you will know where to find <laughs> if uh, if you need this in your workplace right michelle so what led you to your adhd diagnosis it's really interesting so i always thought i was a bit weird and everything seemed to be like being organized and prioritizing and paying bills and all that sort of stuff just seemed really difficult and it wasn't until um I had left my business corporate life and set up on my own and um I put myself forward for an award and I ended up getting it's not it wasn't an award it's kind of a group of 100 successful business people women in the UK and I ended up in the house of lords very fancy um and I met this really gorgeous tall blonde leggy lady who was telling us about um her ADHD diagnosis and as soon as I met her I was just like oh I'm one of those two so um so yes that's how I that's how I that's how I figured it out somebody else basically shown me um what I was like so we're still very very good friends to this day and it was only um it was just before the pandemic so it was only a couple of years ago so right okay so and a late life well not late late but a late dive <laughs> <laughs> you know I was I was 41 yes okay. late yeah. enough Yes, it's very common, isn't it? Um, women in their 40s, 50s, um, suddenly finding out. Why do you think people are only just finding out? So um, I think it's to do with the stereotypes of what ADHD looks like. And it's a, a naughty boy in a classroom that's disruptive, isn't it? That's what we were, were told that that was. And um, ADHD is different in, in women. And girls so um yeah I don't, I don't think we're there yet in terms of people understanding what it is so it's not necessarily because we you know we probably would have been naughty children if we hadn't been conditioned to be good girls and so instead of that external like naughtiness and hyperactivity we kind of turned it in on ourselves um which is really it's it's fascinating and you go, you go through a lot of grief when you find this out because with some accommodations, life could have been significantly easier, um, but significantly less fun as well, I suppose, if we were normal. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. It was, it was, it's just weird. But everybody, all the people I love, I'm like, hmm, should I tell them? <laughs> or do we just like put content out so people come to their own realization? 
Yeah, if there is a certain spark that happens, isn't there, when ADHDers meet each other? It's kind of, for me, it's like a, a knowing, this mm. connection, which is just instant, which is just lovely. Um, yeah, so you you said you were weird. Okay, <laughs> your words, not mine. Um, <laughs> yay! And what um, what challenges did you have before you even knew what was going on? I think the it was a lot of overwhelm mm. because yeah, so that kind of wanting to do all of the things and not really figuring out what are the what are the steps, but wanting to do all the things, so doing all of the things, then burning out constantly, um, and just beating yourself up for being lazy or rubbish or disorganized or clumsy um so there was a lot of that kind of negative self-talk and funnily you know if I you know pursued the whole kind of being a psychologist probably because I didn't understand the world and what the what the rules were and I was always at work I was always that person sitting there thinking this isn't gonna work you know there's a much better way of doing that and but I didn't have the confidence because I didn't I wasn't able to understand that what was bloody obvious to me <laughs> wasn't to other people because yeah it was it was lonely as well because you just don't you just think it's you yeah yeah so some real kind of harsh damaging labels to to grow up with um yet yeah, that kind of problem solving brain was trying to well solving these problems but wasn't able, quite able to to articulate what what was needed to be said mm. yeah okay oh I think the dog might be about to bark so Michelle what is different for you now you've been diagnosed for a few years and you understand yourself more I assume yeah yeah um so I think I have always been awful like I'd rather literally bite my own arm off than ask for help. Um, so being able to get the people around to support me, focus on the stuff that I'm good at and I can do well, and you know, delegate, automate, eliminate the stuff that I'm not good at. So understanding that it's I've been through coaching and counseling to, to come to terms because it was I was very angry looking back over my life and how difficult it has been and unnecessarily so yeah so I went through some coaching counseling and lots of self-forgiveness but having the people and the systems around to support and that self-forgiveness self-compassion self-care um which you know people talk about all the time but it is really crucial yeah yeah absolutely this is something that I advocate for as well is is being kind to yourself and and realizing that it's not these things are not character flaws you know there there are differences in the brain and there are you know I'm sure many strengths and and superpowers some people don't like that word I think <laughs> but yep. what what are your strengths or your superpowers so um it was really weird before this diagnosis. I could list you all the stuff that I wasn't good at. Um, but I've been doing work with a strengths coach, my partner James as well, to understand that. So really good at getting to the root of problems really quickly, seeing, seeing patterns, um, talking, engaging with people, making friends, making things fun and exciting. Um, there's, you know, there's nothing worse than boring meetings and pointless meetings. So cutting through all of that. Yeah. Um, yes, just, yeah, making things more fun. Love it. Love it. OK, so um, what helps you? Like you've got you've got support systems in place. Um, is there um, anything specific that helps you for example um for me it's if i make an appointment i have to put it in my diary in my phone there and then 
there's no good saying I'll, I'll do this later absolutely no good because I might I might not <laughs> so um is there something specific that really helps you that you do um it's so Trello okay. all ideas tasks to do I'm very much a case of if it's not in the diary I don't even realize it's happening <laughs> so but yeah Trello we, I worked with a, a lovely a lovely lady to help me um get over my hatred of online task to do systems <laughs> like, I don't want to be controlled by a computer but it's it's just an easy way of just ideas tasks to do's yeah. and you know I can ignore them <laughs> but it, they're, they're somewhere I don't have my brain doesn't have to go oh you've forgotten this oh you've forgotten that yeah so it's having that other place to to keep free up external your storage yeah exactly external storage to free up your your brain space for other more interesting things mm -hmm. um so that's trello isn't it so mm -hmm. that's that's something i use but only for a little bit of stuff so I, that's something i'll look into thank you there so is. finally then what piece of advice would you give to somebody who's perhaps just recently been diagnosed or is waiting for an assessment um one piece of advice for them so the kind of imposter syndrome stuff around being assessed or going for assessments and having you know being sort of almost granted the the title and label of ADHD is 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 huge so um I think have just have faith that if you have it you will you know you will ha get that label and um get the support that you need but yes, yes. yeah don't I'll second look. guess yourself and chicken out <laughs> yes yeah it took me five years to build up the courage to go for an assessment with mm. with those thoughts you know like oh no I'm fine no I'm not I'm but just yeah. making this up yeah, yeah. yes so I just yeah want I love... label, just want to be special yeah yeah I mean it's better than the labels of lazy and you know unreliable and things like that yeah. so yeah that was lovely it's like get that get that confirmation and get the support you need is what you said which oh, so important thank you well thank you so much for being guest number one on adhd adventures uh, michelle where can people find you if they want to find out more about your work pirates so I am most active on LinkedIn. So Michelle Minikin, there's not very many of us, or if you just Google work pirates, you'll find us. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. And um, I look forward to sharing your interview with the world. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.